the usual disclaimers apply. Uh, GDB is not necessarily the best debugger for all cases, um, but I'm just going to show how you can use GDB to debug your C programs. And this is mostly the basic commands. Uh, you should really look in the manual for more complicated um, commands. So let's look at the screen to sh uh, to look at the start looking from a sample program. So let, let, now let's look at a sample program to get a sense of uh, what we're talking about. We we use look at the sample program called prog.c, which has three different functions, none of which do anything useful, but they help us uh, exercise some of the GDB functions. The first function is the noaf function, which doesn't do anything. The function called func1 takes integer argument and calls a function called func2 by basically incrementing this argument. The function func2 has a bug in the code, um, and, and, we'll, and if you look at the code, it's obvious. Pointer is initialized to null, and in one of the code path where val is greater than zero, pointer can be set to, to zero. I mean, uh, you're, you're trying to um, access a null pointer, and you should get a segmentation uh, violation. And in the main function calls func1 with one, and func1 would increment that to two, so you, you should get a value of two here, val is two, so you take the first code where, where it's a failure. If had val been uh, less than zero, then you'd have taken an alternative path where you'd have allocated over here, we would have allocated memory chunk, uh, but we didn't do that. The first command we should look at is how to compile the program to use a GDB, and the option we use is minus G. So we say GCC, minus g prog.c minus o prog. And this is how you would uh, compile your C programs. So if you go ahead and run this program, you get a bus error, meaning that there's a bug. And this happens to be the easiest bug to debug. So let's fire up uh, our debugger GDB for the program. And so now we are inside the debugger. The first command we need to understand is how to run the program inside the debugger, and the command to use is run. So you say run, and you'll run the program. If you need to pass some arguments to the program, you would pass it right here. So you would say arg1, arg2, and those are passed to the particular application. Our sample program does not take any uh, inputs in the arguments, so it doesn't really matter, right? So we run this program, and sure enough, it failed. It, it failed, and if you look at the screen, it shows that on line number 16 in your program, where star PTR was set to zero, we had a problem. We had a segmentation violation, and if you print the value of pointer, it's a null pointer, which is zero. So essentially, we know what the bug is, right? And and hopefully we'll go back and, and fix the code. Um, the GDB lets you look at the system to see what the state of the various variables are. So you can look at while it happens to be two right now, pointer is null, um, and, it, and you can see where we are right now because where it crashed, we were, you know, we went from main to func1 to func2 on line numbers 25, 9, and 16, which essentially says where we are in the call stack. It lets us go up the call stack so we can see what was available when we call func1. Actually, in this case, you can see it on the screen as arg equals 1 right, right here. In case we didn't have that, we can say up. So we can go up. And then we can say print arg, and it'll tell you what the value, was, value of arg was in the calling function. If we go down, we go back to a previous function, to the func2, where we can say print arg, and arg is different because, you know, because of the, now we are in saying arg, uh, the func1 or func2. So we can go up and look at variables which are local to the particular function. So if we go all the way up to main, um, we can see the, the, the values up there. The command list, let's list the source code. So we can say list, which will tell you 
the, the code around where you are list minus shows the previous lines and list gives you the, the future lines so that essentially would help you debug the um, segmentation violation run it inside the debugger and where it code dumps you know where to go right. next we look at more uh, interesting commands where we want to set a breakpoint to capture the state of the system before we get a segmentation violation and we know the bug might be in func2 so let's say let's like list func2 and we want to see what happens at the point say line 15 so we say break 15 which basically says i want to set a breakpoint at line 15 so the program comes to line 15 it should stop so let's go ahead and run the program again and now it stops at the breakpoint at line 15. So we get to look at the values and we see that value of val is two. And, you know, so we, we, we eventually gonna take that route. GTB is powerful enough for you to change the variables in order to um, see what would happen. But before we get there, um, one of the ways to set a breakpoint, so if you're coming if you're setting a breakpoint and if you're coming back and uh, to this point all the time, you can set conditionals. So essentially, you say cunt one val greater than zero. This means that I want to stop at breakpoint one when the value of val becomes greater than zero. So if I run this again, it'll stop here because you know th this happens to be a trivial example. But so, so you don't have to sit through all the uh, breakpoints. Your program may run for, for, for a while before it crashes. That's a good point to look at that. So right now you look at the value uh, val and it happens to be two. So you, you're supposed to go and change the code. But here is a quick and dirty way to see what happens if you had fixed the code. So you can say set val equals zero, which says that, so now if I do print val, it's zero. So this is the same as you changing the code and compiling and coming back again. So at this point, I want to see how the program works. So I can step through the functions using two functions, step or next. Step takes you to the next uh, step of the program. So the next step is since file now is zero, we go into the loop and we see pointer equals malloc and we see step. At this point, we see the pointer value is some address. We don't know what it is, but it looks like it has some address. And if you do a step at this point, we will go inside the function no up. And there's really nothing, but we still did go to line number six, and then we did come back to func2. Had we used the function next, we would have not gone inside no op. So the essential difference between step and no op is whether you want to go into every function or some functions you know you don't really care, you can do a next. So at this point, if you do a step PTR, it's still that pointer and we step through it and step and our program exits fine. Right. So these are essentially some of the commands that you would you would use to debug a program. Uh, the commands to um, use are you compile your program using minus G option of, of uh, GCC. You run your program inside the debugger. You set up breakpoints using break and you could use conditionals to, to not have to go through every sentence. Uh, and once you hit the breakpoint, you can look at the value of variables using print command. Um, and you can step through the functions from that point on using step or next. And hopefully that will uh, go a long way in helping you debug. More interesting functions are, uh, you should refer to the tutorial. Thank you.